the rowing crews here on the Sun Coast this week for the World Championships must train and work together seamlessly to be successful. And often, the lessons learned together in those boats are life lessons. Former rower Michael Danzinger is the author of Small Puddles. It's his memoir about overcoming odds. I love the subtitle. Tell me the subtitle. The triumphant story of Yale's worst oarsman. So, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. Were you really? I was the worst that ever was. Um, and but it's really a story about persistence, hapless persistence, persistence in the face of not achieving what most people would think would be success, which is being in the first boat, winning championships, and that sort of thing. But what I learned uh, was just that not quitting is a virtue in itself. I um, like that. Even yeah. though it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a bumpy road, but it was really worthwhile. And so what's it like in those boats, especially for the worst rower? Yeah. Well, my experience is a little bit different from the experience that the folks at the World Championship is having. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. your experience for us. We're thrashing around. We're smashing our knuckles into the gunnels. People are cursing. The coxswain, who was sort of a misfit as well, was trying to keep us going together, but we were all striving for that moment where we put the oars in the water at the same time, we applied pressure at the same time, and we took them out at the same time. And as simple as it sounds, it's it's more elusive than it is simple. Yeah. And that's what kept me going. That's what made me not want to. Uh, so it wasn't just you as your worst, the worst oar. Um, there were the whole crew of you guys. Well, yeah, <laughs> were but pretty bad. We, were, we all were horrible, but I was the worst because, in a way, I was the worst because I never quit. The other people in my boat, one by one, they would quit because they didn't think it was worth it or there was more work that they mm -hmm. had to do or, yeah. um, you know, it's a lot of time. At Yale, yeah. it's 18 hours of rowing for every minute of racing that no one will ever know about. Yeah. Wow. Um, do you have, did you have a position you rowed in? I rowed in the three seat, which was sort of the black hole of rowing. It wasn't, <laughs> you know, I, you know the, the, ba the people in the back of the boat set the pace, the people in the front of the boat set the balance, the middle yes. three are... Um, so the engine an room, and this then is, me. Yeah, oh. was an eight. It was an eight. And where did the stroke sit? With the uh, he sits, well, the stroke sits in the stern, but it's really, but since everyone's moving backwards, so you're follow, you, you can actually visually see what he's you doing You can as see well. what he's doing. He's kind of the quarterback, and we yeah. try and keep in. Are you still friends with, with these guys that you've rode Still with? great friends. Really? You yeah. weren't yeah. that bad then. They liked you. <laughs> they loved me, and we loved each other. That's one of the things about it, is it's such a unique experience that the, that only people who have done it can really relate to it. So mm -hmm. you end up being friends for 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 life. So, so, pe so people who rode at university, you were kind of you were oddballs, were you? Would you say, or were you standard athletes? Oddballs. You were oddballs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that is, that's, that's what's in the book. There's, that's what's in the book. Small puddles. It's oddballs. Just a bunch can, of oddballs, you know, trying to pull it together to yeah. do something that has meaning for you make you know, it sound like us. drama wow. club. It, it, so, it sounds really cool it <laughs> is really cool but it's a lot to you know drama is more improv there's no improv in rowing you this gotta really learn to be you yeah, do, yeah. do this one motion do it over and over again until, yeah, you, yeah. until you get it right and so you're spending 18 hours a week at something you're not very good at but you <laughs> never gave up you kept doing it right what did you learn from that well i learned as i said i learned that just sticking with something um, is valuable and in life you know l later on when I was 26 years old I started an organization to help inner city kids you were talking about education and how yeah. important that is um, and to help inner city kids from Boston get into good schools and go to college and I had no experience doing any of that I had no leadership experience management or uh, certainly fundraising experience but over the last quarter century because n we haven't quit We've sent over 2,700 kids to college. Wow. What a great thing to have oh, all the schools wonderful. in our area. Now that we have this Olympic Park, mm -hmm. yeah. to have all the kids, l we could raise money to get every school a couple of teams like and have that. them yeah. compete locally. In, in Boston, they have something called um, Row Boston, which is for inner city. And these kids go on to row in national championships. And the lessons row? that you learn about discipline. Do you, do you live here in Sarasota? I don't. I live in Boston, but I'd, I'd love to come down. It's gorgeous. <laughs> well, we're just well, we're down here. Row, Sar yeah. row yeah. Sarasota. He's recruiting new residents. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Tell us a little High about kids, this no. book that we have here. So tell us about your book. Well, the book, um, see, when I went to Yale, um, there were a bunch of books that were, not a lot of books, but there were a few books written about rowing, and they were all just basically the same. Mm -hmm. Fill-in-the-blank kid shows up at fill-in-the-blank Ivy League school. He gets discovered by a, uh, a coach on the freshman quad. He's told that if he rows hard, he can make something of himself and go on to Olympic glory. Yeah. And in all those books, that's what happened. So I thought, hmm, I can do that. So I went to a meeting that night. There were 200 kids from my class at Yale in that uh, freshman class uh, in the meeting interested in rowing. and. 
the guy said, we don't cut anybody at Yale. People sort of self-select, and I thought, you know what, I'm just not going to quit. I can do it. I cannot quit. And seven of us, of the 250, were rowing four years later. Oh. Um, so it was really about, um, it, it was really about that experience, not rowing in the Olympics, which I never did. I never came close to rowing in the Olympics. But as one of my friends who did row in the Olympics uh, told me, he said, the only difference between you and me is my boat went two and a half miles an hour faster than yours. Other than that, it was the same. Um, and one of the things that I learned and that I write about in the book is that um, over time, you know, coaches and even the best rowers started to have more than a grudging respect, but an actual respect for the guys who didn't Just achieve success, that but yeah, never that gave yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, people Wonderful. will love meeting you. He is going to be where? At the rowing championships, I'm going to be at the rowing championships. I'm going to be signing books. Signing the book. This 9 o'clock Wednesday morning, right? 9 o'clock Wednesday morning, and then I'm going to be at a library um, doing some reading and maybe talking about the Dewey Decimal System. Oh, yeah. so, oh I can hardly wait for that lecture. You're leveraging that Yale education. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Finally. Coming up, good news for goodwill. Thank you so much. Thank that you very much. Awesome. Thanks for having me. That was, that was great. That was awesome.